Welcome to Retraining, A Better Way. My name is Christina Day and I'm a network automation engineer working at network to code that is a consulting company helping companies to adopt network automation solutions. In this lighting, lighting talk, uh, I'm going to share with you a simple way of handling the retry operation. Retrying is something that in a microservice architecture or just more simple when you interact with an external services or even an internal services that are not fully controlled by you, you have to maybe keep trying an operation because it's a matter of time, could be network packet loss, congestion, maybe the server is overloaded, the database is in a deadlock. Well, for whatever reason, your operation cannot move forward because there is a temporal issue that with some retrying logic can be solved. I guess that all of you or some of you will be familiar with this kind of code that I took from Stack Overflow. It's something that, yeah, you have to keep trying, keep trying because you know that eventually the operation will succeed. So it's not because there is an error. It's not an, a, something that is an error forever. You know that just keeping trying for a while, this will be solved and the operation will succeed. But this code, if you want to parameterize it well, defining different intervals, different jitter, different parameters around this code can make your code not easy to read. And you will agree with me that readability is one of the most important features of a coding. So how to do this in another way? There are other ways. There are a lot of them. Maybe you are already familiar with frameworks that has already components that are dealing with this specific function. I'm not going to talk about them because there is other ways to solve this. But if you are working with a simple script that is a small or you don't want to get into this change or refactor of your code, you only want to handle a specific retry operation that you have to deal with. There are in Python several libraries and today my point is to show you how Backoff works. Backoff, there is this link here that you can download and install with Pipe, but has a really simple way of using it with decorators. It works either for synchronous and asynchronous code and as we're going to see in the demo, it's super easy to handle when there is an exception in your function, it retries. Or maybe when the output of this function is, the, is not the one that you are waiting for, it also retries for you in a really, really simple way. Um, I believe easy to read way. Also, just to keep in mind, this is not the only library that offers these functionalities. There is also Tenacity that gives more or less the same user experience, but I'm going to show you back off today. So let's go into the demo. And in this case, we have a really simple program that is just running the test function, simulating an external interaction with a service that is using a global retry variable that is increasing every time and is not going to succeed until it goes into three. So you know that in this case, if I run this program, just at the first operation, we are going to get a runtime error. So traditionally, how we are going to solve this? Usual way is just adding this boilerplate code saying, okay, while true, please try this operation that I know that can fail. But in case that it, it succeeds, you break. But if not, just keep trying. This is going to iterate until three times and then just succeed. So let's run it again and we see, yeah, it passes. So let's ask ourselves how backoff can improve this operation. Let's import first the library and now let's reset let's reset the code as we had before. So here we are going to start using the decorator. As I mentioned before, the decorator is as simple as say back off on exception. Let's start with something simple. 
and what we could use by default is uh, the back of um, expo exponential timing between intervals and we have to say yeah which exception we are gonna be listening for we can li hear for one or for others but in this case we are using the runtime error so let's go for the time runtime error and by default this we are gonna delegate all the retry logic into this library that is gonna use a uh, algorithm just to keep retrying and this is the kind of exception that is looking for so if we try this what we are getting is exactly the same but as you can see the timing is a bit different you see that yeah there was not so quick because it's introducing for you a delay between the operations the other method that is also there are several arguments that we can use but it's interesting to work maybe the case is that maybe our function is not raising an exception but is returning an empty uh, an empty data when we get this maybe what we want is not on exception we want on predicate on predicate we can pass a callable just to see what we are expecting for but in this case we are just gonna say we don't want an empty response so we are gonna change the kind of error and in this case what we are gonna say is if the retry is less than three we are gonna return an empty string an empty dictionary but if not we are gonna return something now we are doing the same operation with the same parameters but in a different way we are not waiting for an exception we are waiting for a response that is not the one that we are expecting we don't want an empty response for instance we could use a different functions that are more complex but this is good enough to simulate so we are gonna get exactly the same behavior but this is not all we can do several um, more funny things with back off we could combinate them we could just use okay the back of on predicate but also i want to check that if there is an exception and here i'm gonna use the fibonacci algorithm and i am looking for the runtime exception so here we are gonna retry in two cases what we are gonna say is yeah if the retry is less than three we are gonna say this if retry is less than five we are gonna exception raise this is not true this is empty empty response and in this case we are gonna print raise exception and here we are gonna raise the runtime error so we have <clears throat> that the other entity can be just responding something empty or maybe just raising a whatever exception you are expecting for this uh, server so here we are gonna keep retrying for this for a while when this succeeds between three and five we are gonna go for this and at the end we are gonna get something that all this back of library is accepting so let's go for it and let's see what we get first we are getting an entire response at some point we are solving the problem we are but we are getting a exception with some typo and finally we just succeed the beautiful of this is that yeah you can using only these decorators the on predicate and an exception predicate for the response and exception to just catch everything that can get from this function you are giving your code an easy way to read it and actually a lot of different attributes that or arguments that you can change in order to modify how this logic works and the final result is that you get what you want in an easy way to read and reproduce in other places so this is the end of this lighting talk hopefully you have got some useful insights for this library
Thank you very much. If you have any question, feel free to ask.